On Monday, we ended up getting our first look into tons of different stuff that Apple are launching. Primarily along the software route, however, we did end up seeing some cool hardware things announced as well. And the first one that we're just going to jump straight into is obviously the Vision Pro. Now, this thing is going to be releasing in about a year's time. And personally, I don't really care about it. I'll be honest. It's £3,500. It's not something that I'm going to be getting myself. And I'm pretty sure basically next to nobody of the general consumer base is going to actually be getting it. Uh, it will be basically reserved for people who have a lot of money just to be able to throw around and mess around with, which is cool. It will be the first of its proper kind in terms of the Apple experience. So hopefully we get something later on down the line. However, based off of other reviewers, it does look like it is very interesting when it comes to the amount of sensors it has on the outside and the inside for tracking your eyes, everything like that. One thing that I do think is really cool though about it primarily is that you just don't need any controllers. It is completely based off of literally just the vision and it tracking your eyes and just hand movements and gestures. That to me is really cool. Yes, others do similar things to this. However, I would say that this seems to be a lot more just dialed in a little bit more than others. So a lot of them out there, typically they can kind of mess up a little bit more and as well as that, the pretty much if you want like the best experience, you require the controllers. Whereas with these, it seems like they've actually dialed in overall all the sensors being able to pick up on almost everything around you so i do think this is a cool thing however it's not going to be something that i'm particularly going to be following too much as it's not necessarily something that i care too much about then the second piece of tech that we ended up seeing was the new macbook air which is a 15 inch display which i believe if i'm not mistaken is the first 15 inch macbook air which is really cool the fact that it weighs 1.15 i believe it was no 1.5 kilograms 1.5 kilograms and it's literally 1.15 centimeters thin. I cannot lie. Absolutely insane how like absurdly thin that is. That is so thin that honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a maybe a bend gate again, you know, like we had with the iPhone 6s, I believe. Maybe we'll get something like that again with this, where people will be able to just snap this in half. It is that thin. It wouldn't be surprising, to be honest, if we saw something like it. Everything else, though, that we know about this is that it's an M2 chip and has an 18-hour battery life. It's definitely going to be an interesting thing to see how much this ends up selling in comparison to the 13-inch. As in my mind, the Airs seem to be targeted towards, you know, the more portability side of things. I'm not sure how well this is going to sell in comparison when you could just spend an extra, I believe, even £400 right now to get a M1 Pro MacBook that's a 14 inch more portable more powerful than this one it's just something I think will be an interesting thing I don't know if it's being thrown in there as more of a like laddering step but who knows and then the last actual bit of tech that we're going to talk about is going to be the Mac Studio and the cheese grater the Mac Pro Honestly, I'm kind of surprised they chose to bring this back. I know that all the rumors were saying they were going to, but to be honest, it just seems really pointless if I'm honest. I don't think there's really much reason to get it. It just doesn't seem to be interesting to me. If I was Apple, I would have made an even better chip to put inside of the Mac Pro to kind of justify the price. Instead of just turning around and saying, look, you can have tons of RAM in this thing. You can have tons of storage in this thing. Yes, we've got airflow. Like fundamentally, most people are going to opt for spending three and a half grand less for a Mac Studio that does almost the same power as this thing. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, bench spec comparisons. However, all round, I would have rather just seen them, you know, make a new processor or like, you know, have a even better, better version of a processor. It's, I don't know, for me, it wasn't necessarily something that I'm too interested in. The Mac Studio, though, is something that I'm interested in in the future, as eventually, once I have the money for it, I would like to either upgrade this PC and build a new one, or buy a Mac Studio for future editing, as I found that this PC is now starting to give me issues when it comes to a lot of video editing for my main channel. But let's talk about what WWDC is primarily based around every single year, which is the software announcements. Which, to be honest, I think some of them were cooler than others, and there's one thing that, to be honest, I'm kind of surprised wasn't talked about more. But I do also think that is just because of the type of person that I am. I'm massively into things like self-improvement, and one part of this entire announcement really just actually was really cool to me. So we'll go through this list that I've got written down on the iPad here of different things. So first up, we've got personalized calls, which, to be honest, it's, it's okay. <laughs> I don't care, I'll be honest. Like... Wow, I can now have a different screen. Like, I'm pretty sure your iPhone, when you get a call anyway, it comes up with the person's profile picture. It's not exactly like it's going to be doing tons different. It's just interesting. 
it's fine. I don't really think it's necessarily anything special. I'm kind of surprised it was like one of the main points about it, if I'm honest. <laughs> uh, next up, you have sending calls uh, to voicemail, which to be honest, actually sounds amazing. Being able to send calls to voicemail and then being able to have a live transcript of what the person is saying is brilliant. I'll be honest. I am someone who despises phone calls. Anyone who is within my generation, being about 20, 21 or younger, you are all aware that honestly phone calls are the worst who wants to be sat on a phone call talking to people i despise it. i hate being called by random phone numbers even if it's something important i'd rather just be able to have a voice and be like okay cool let me give them a call back because i despise phone calls so this for me is actually quite a decent positive win for apple next up is going to be a safety feature which is checking in on people and being able to see when people have got home so this is actually something that i would have thought wouldn't have been a thing for a while anyway because i think this is something that people wouldn't think about too often However, I actually am perfectly pro this. I think this is really cool, mainly because of a few different reasons. One is obviously just because of the state of some areas of the world right now and how people are feeling when it comes to their own personal safety. However, the other one for me personally is like, for example, when I was in Iceland with my girlfriend, um, we ended up being screwed over when it came to getting our car hire. So we ended up having to get a taxi driver to where we were staying. And for me personally, I'm just someone who isn't a, like, when when I was younger, for example, I've lived in the middle of nowhere, so normally my parents would drop me off into town, and I would rarely take the bus, um, and I've rarely ever used taxis. So personally, I do have a level of, like, anxiety when it comes to being in, like, taxi cars, uh, and as well as that, just, like, using general public transport outside, like, trains. I think trains are just more relaxing and enjoyable. I'm just personally not fun. Like, I'm a big fan of general public transport, primarily off of stories that I've heard and as well as that. Just of the area that I live in, for example, the bus network isn't exactly that great. I used to use it for about a year of my life when it went to go into college, but yeah, it wasn't a big fan for me. And I think what this was really cool for is that when I went to Iceland, I remember just messaging my sister being like, I'm just going to send you my location just in case, just in case anything happens um, so that you're just able to just send off a location. Even though we're in different countries, it's a useful thing. I think having something like this where you can just instantly share it and be able to just tap a feature saying, yep, we're home, done, instead of having to send messages back and forth. Interesting feature. Definitely going to be used, I think, a lot by especially, like, say, like, couples and so on, just wanting to make sure their partners have got home safe or got to places safe as well. Then you've got filtered searches on messages, which, again, pretty decent. Again, just normal utilization of just what's already there. Great job, Apple. Thank you for giving us something to just make it a little bit easier to find that one message you sent to someone a year ago, just to prove them wrong of what they said. Something very useful right there. Then, as well as that, you have that FaceTime is coming to Apple TV cool. Again, I have an Apple TV. I think that's great. Sounds fun, but to be honest, I don't really use FaceTime that often anymore. However, definitely in the future, it will be something that will be very cool to be able to use just so that you have it all up on one big display instead of just using your phone or your iPad and so on. And then you have what is considered one of the more like bigger hints of the year when it came to the new iOS, which is standby mode, which to be honest, I don't care about. A lot of these, I just don't think is that interesting. I think this year for software, especially just wasn't too big of a like jump it wasn't too interesting all round when it came to it what we ended up seeing was just that it's effectively a sidecar alarm clock that's pretty much what it is if i'm honest yeah you can mess around with it have live notifications and so on like but overall it's just something that honestly i don't really see too many people using i'll be honest i hardly see anyone using for multiple reasons one the amount of people and the amount of time that you'll hear online just don't have your phone on you in bed. Don't just have a bright light on next to you. Yeah, you can darken it. Like, it doesn't matter. You Like, most people aren't going to be having their phone, like, blaring near their face with, like, their cool little thing just so it's off and charging. Like, it just doesn't matter. I don't see people using it too much. I think it's more of those gimmicky features that gets added that doesn't really have too much purpose. For example, even though I love the iPhone 14, the Dynamic Island is way more of a gimmick feature than it is anything else. It's just solely so they can sell more, so there is a difference that is notable from the last one. And then the last two, if I'm honest, are actually kind of the cooler features, in my opinion. They're really small, which is just being able to airdrop your entire contact details to someone. I think that's really great, just being able to just quickly transfer over just by putting your phone on top of one another. 
great job, honestly. I think that's really cool. It'll be really good for, let's say, businesses to be able to do. Let's say, for example, uh, you want to start a little photography business, you want to start doing freelance work, and you want to go into different shops and so on, and you want to just give them a digital business card in a way. You can go in there, give them a digital business card, they can call you at any time. I think that is a cool little concept to have. However, the main one for me is going to be the journal app. I journal like crazy. I have my journal literally right here. This is my new one. And I also use my notes app to journal as well. And the fact that they're bringing a actual journal app that will allow you to put photos in there, make it all look cool and actually have like a functioning journal system like you do with other apps out there. But it's going to be native to Apple and hopefully will transfer across from like, you know, MacBooks and so on. Just great. Honestly, I love this. Couldn't be like more hyped. It's what I mentioned earlier as a self-improvement guy. I think this is so cool as a feature that I can't wait to see more of. Then we're going to be talking about the other three OSs. We're going to go through the iPad one first. And what I'm just going to preface before this is that I'm not going to be mentioning much of what I've already mentioned because a lot of these have a lot less to do with what you'll get on, let's say, the new iPhone OS as most of what's on the new iPhone OS as like new features is also on everything else. So there's no point in me reiterating those points. So starting off, we have the iPad display, which is pretty much the main entire thing around this, which is the lock screen being able to bring widgets onto the lock screen cool feature again it'll be interesting to see how this is utilized by the average person if it's utilized that much anyway and they're also bringing things like live activities and pretty much what they had already added to the iphones about last year when it comes to all widgets and everything that they did with them to the ipad and just making them so it just functions a bit better with the ipad there's not too much that's changing with it I can't really say that it's an interesting year for iPads at all. And yeah, outside of that, the health app is coming to the iPad. To be honest, I think this is one of the cooler features. If It sounds really stupid. These are really basic things, and obviously this is something you'll hear from a lot of Apple users. They don't get all the basic stuff. So yeah, one thing that I despise is I don't like the health app on the phone, if I'm honest. I just think that it's all there's so much information all shoved into a really tiny display. And I think having it on an iPad is going to be a lot nicer to be able to view everything on. And all around, being able to have the health app on the iPad opens up the possibility moving forward that I actually think you might be able to sell Apple Watches without iPhones. This is something that I think will be an interesting thing to see what happens. It's a lot of the time, or at least literally how iPhones and Apple Watches are meant to work, is that you need the iPhone at least for the setup process. However, I think that it'll be interesting to see what happens moving forward now that the health app's moving onto the iPad. If, you know, they bring the watch app and then allow you to set it up through that. So it'll be interesting to see as it would allow more people to join into the Apple ecosystem without necessarily swapping over their phone if they don't want to. Then you've got the new Mac OS, which is called Samoa. Another random name that they love throwing out there for their cool updates for the Mac OS that typically do nothing. I'll be honest, as much as I love my Mac, the software isn't exactly like, oh yes, we're groundbreaking it every year. Personally, I, I'm not going to exactly try and tell you that it is. Uh, yeah, they're bringing widgets. Cool. Interesting. You'll be able to blur them into the background when you decide to open something else. Great. Again, widgets, to be honest. I hardly use my own widgets. I don't care about them. I don't see them as this big thing. The closest thing that I use my widgets for is that I've got my, you know, displayed time of my screen time. I've got a notes app that I can instantly open. And then outside of that, I think it's just what battery things are at. That's all I use it for. I don't care about any of the other widgets. And then the last two things I would say are the more interesting ones. So the first one is conference calling that they're adding onto it, which is basically just allowing you to bring your face in the front and then everything else behind you can become things like the PowerPoint presentation that you're showing off. Just meaning that instead of you sitting up there as your own little camera and then having the display, it just means that you can kind of actually be presenting it properly without it feeling like, okay, yeah, everyone swap back between looking here, looking here, looking here, looking here and then just getting like you know just being like okay cool just instead you can at least sit there and kind of like point at things it'll be interesting to see kind of how businesses utilize this if they do anyway and then the other one is website apps which is already on windows however i think that this hopefully will be nicer based off of what they showed off with things like the pinterest app i think that it looks like they're going to try and make them more native to let's say actually being like apps off of let's say your phone or your ipad but onto the laptop, but obviously as the browser. So it all just kind of looks and functions the same instead of, let's say, when you load it up on your computer, it just kind of feels like a full screen version of the website that doesn't allow you to tab out. It isn't necessarily interesting. It's okay. It's meh doesn't really matter so it'll be interesting to see what happens but again nothing special this year for the mac os 
Now though, when it comes to the Apple Watch, this is something that I'm trying to delve a little bit deeper into. I'm starting to wear my Apple Watch a little bit more to think, you know, to track things like walking a bit more. I need to get out and walk more now that this is my actual job, you know, sitting at this desk all day, doing things like that. I need to go out walking. I need to take more care of my fitness and so on. So the Apple OS is something that I'm more interested in looking at this year. And we've got four primary things that I've got noted down on here. First of which is fully utilizing the screen space of the Apple Watch because even though they pretty much already do, it just means that they're going to try and make every single bit of screen completely used. Great. Again, it's not insane. It's just decent. Not necessarily something to be like just shouting from the rooftops in excitement about. Uh, then you've got on here smart stacks coming to the Apple Watch, which is actually a feature that I'm kind of glad to see is coming. So it kind of makes sense for the Apple Watch because you kind of got something similar to it with, let's say, your basics. However, this will allow you to have more customized ability with everything across the board. It will just kind of look nicer all around. And I can't wait to get my hands on something, let's say, like uh, a new Apple Watch and just have that a little bit bigger display purely because of the actual bezel size and everything like that. I think it will just be a little bit cooler to see what happens, especially with smart stacks now that they'll kind of make utilizing them as an actual utility over just a fitness tracker a bit more interesting. You've then got on there as well, estimated zones of cardio that appears to only be for cycling. You can tell me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I believe zones of cardio is a thing across every single type of cardio. It's not just cycling. I've heard a lot of people talk about this, and one of my best distinctions of it is I believe zone 2 cardio is considered one of your best types purely because you're able to still hold a conversation and you're still being physically active. And for me, for example, if I go for a run, I can't be in zone 2. I phys my body just physically doesn't do it. I am basically instantly into higher zones of cardio and it makes me borderline unable to have actual conversations. Whereas, let's say, fast walking, I'm in zone 2 cardio because I've just got a high heart rate naturally. And because of that, it basically means that I would like to be able to track that sort of thing. Be able to track seeing, okay, am I in zone 1, zone 2, zone 3, zone 4, whatever it might be. But by the looks of it, it might only be for cycling. I hope to see it come to other things as well. Outside of this, you do have a few other things out there. Uh, however, the main one that I saw was this mental health aspect, which is basically just going to be the mood app on your phone, just asking you, how are you? Do you feel good, bad, unhappy, happy, whatever it might be? And you can just track your mood throughout the day. This is something that you see a lot more within the self-improvement community more recently, especially with things like trackers and using trackers on things like Notion or within a bullet journal, whatever it might be, that you can track your overall mood for the day and see how you felt. It just means that you'll be able to do this all digitally. It seems like Apple are going that way anyway, where for example, the journal app is coming to the iPhone and being able to do things like having your mood trackers on there without using external apps. It seems more like Apple are trying to corner out as much of the market as possible so that people can just use their baseline apps instead of downloading loads of external ones. But anyway, that is it when it comes to everything tech-wise around this entire event. I think that it was an interesting year for WWDC. However, it definitely wasn't as cool as, let's say, last year, in my opinion. I think they just added a bit more. They added, gave us a bit more things to be hyped for. But yeah, the Vision Pro will be very interesting to see what happens with it. And all around software-wise, it's not crazy. It'll be a slight bump in improvement. And I mean slight. I don't think people are even going to realize that it is a difference from iOS 16 to 17, to be honest. There's hardly any difference. Not very interesting. But yeah, outside of this, honestly, I'm hyped for the end of the year to see what the iPhone 15 is like, a possible folding phone, hopefully, you know, future improvements to things like, you know, the HomePods, the AirPods Pro Max, and everything like that. So it'll be very interesting to see what we get later on this year. Anyway, if you are interested in tech content like this, and you want to see more videos discussing random bits of tech, productivity, and as well future photography content for anyone who loves photography, purely because this channel is meant to be more around that edge. However, I'm getting a new camera. We'll be doing an unboxing and everything like that very soon. I can't wait to discuss it. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a like, do subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week. Have a good one.